Hi everybody, my name is Max and this is Little Nerdy Solutions with me. Today I will briefly run through how I connect the plugin PDF++ into Obsidian, then bring in a PDF, pull out highlights and show you the specific settings that I use so that I can do annotating, highlighting and extraction on PDF with Obsidian and these settings. So the great thing about Obsidian, and I'm using a Mac operating system and ecosystem, is that you can have it so it syncs through iCloud. That is the way that I utilize this on my Mac and on my iPad and on my iPhone. But today we'll just be looking at the basics. So let's get started with setting up an empty vault. So I have a vault here. Basically, I've just put in some instructions for how to go through setting this up. A folder for PDFs, a folder for the notes, or the annotated highlights. I will share this vault so then people can try it out and have these instructions and be able to go through them themselves. It's just the a base vault. So I'll go through all of the different steps. I saw somebody else doing this type of video where they just showed you everything even the kind of figuring stuff out if the solution wasn't quite right. So, first thing I'm going to do is go to settings. I can press, so I'm just gonna say go to settings here. Uh, go into community plugins, you'll need to enable it, and then go to browse. Under here, you put PDF, plus, plus, and arigatou gozaimasu to Ryota Ushio. So we go install. This will install the plugin into the vault. And then you click on to enable. Now, the next thing that I'll suggest doing here is going to options and making these specific changes. So they're within, that's how to set up Obsidian PDF file. I've got it here on another window. And we'll go make some changes. So the first change that we'll make is to the display text format. I've created my own formats for this so that when I pull the annotations at the end of it, it does a little link. You can even see that just here. It does a little link. So then when you click on that link, it takes you to that exact spot in the PDF where you pulled it from. Here, I personally have made a couple of different changes. I can't exactly remember what they do, but I'm just going to be putting in the changes that I made here. So then I know it will work exactly the way that I have it set up in my other vault. Others will understand about how this all works. Myself, I just know what works for me and that's the go. So I'm just going to copy and paste it from the other call out. Looks the same. And then I call this one here text. These are like different templates. So when you go to pull the text when you automate that selection, um, you can make it tailored to what you want. Let's get rid of that. So we've gone through and made those changes and here's an example of what it looks like. So when it pulls out a quote, it'll have the quote and then it will have this which will click, when you click on it, it takes you straight to that place in the PDF. This is what it looks like as an extraction. So if I go over this, you'll be able to see it I go over the top of it, boop, this is what it actually looks like. Oh, I've just made that a link to Wikipedia because this was from a Reddit article. But this is what it actually looks like when it's expanded. Um, I, can, I can go and do this in double brackets and you'll see what I mean. So that's what it looks like. The understanding here is that that's the link to the PDF. This is the, so that the page number. This is the selection, perhaps the row number. And then this dash, that thing, then that's the page. So that's what the text will be that it displays as. So we've made those changes. Now we'll go to, then the next selection is that what I use is called autocopy. 
That means that when you click on a PDF, the text, it will auto highlight it and then auto copy it. So you have an auto copy, auto focus, auto paste. I use auto copy and auto paste. So maybe I'll just show you what this looks like. And so you can click on here and then that will be initiating it. I'll just give you a quick example of what that looks like. Yep. So this is a PDF that I downloaded previously. We'll go into here, click on this. Oop. I'll highlight some text and that link will be copied. Once I create a new note, we'll just call this Davies note and you paste it, there you go. There's the, there's a link. So if I click on that, boop, it'll take you straight back there. I believe it's mono, both directional, so you can double click on it and it'll show you, take you to where that actual highlight is stored. Okay, so that's what that looks like. Now the next option is about auto paste. So when you highlight text, it will automatically paste it into, into a note. So let's give it a go here. Yeah, so it, then it is pasted into that note and just app appended it to the end. That's great. That's what we want it to do, especially when it comes to using the iPad. So just to make the changes in terms of how I highlight text, hmm, let's have a little look here. Okay, I figured out what was happening there. This, and then we change it from title and page, display, default display text format to page. And then when we click here, what it is that we're going to have, we click, I have title and page, which will, if you click, title and page will give you the title and then also the page number. And if you want just the page number, which is my preference for when I'm taking highlights, then you'll have it like this and you'll have just the page number. So there are the options. Let's see if this makes any changes here. If I pull it in as a quote. Okay, so that'll be a template for how the information is arranged. And then this is what type of information is in the link, I believe. But for now, I just leave it as text. If you want to have the title and the page number, then that one. If you want just the page number, then this one. So we will continue on. So we've changed these options here. And now we're onto the auto copy and paste, which you just saw how it works. Now there is some changes that I would make. So under the auto copy, I would, for when I'm doing the, for the iPad setup, I would enable auto copy and leave these settings as they are. I'd leave this as that. And when it comes to auto paste, enable, yes, yes. Yep, last active and open. So that means whatever last note file that you had, that's where we'll be copying the information. Now I would disable this so then it doesn't switch over to that note that it's copied into. Um, also we'll disable this because if you have this, wherever the cursor is in that note, that's where it will paste the information to. Whereas if you unclick that, it will append it to the end of the note. And my suggestion is to then re-click enable this. So then there'll be a space between the, the last annotation and the pasted one. And I would also do this so then it doesn't open that file up that it's pasting to. They're the general settings. We'll just do a recap. Go through and change these settings. And these ones. Turn this to text. Then change the auto copy. Just enable auto copy, then change the auto paste settings. And then under general, unclick this. Okay, let's give it a go. So this is the last note that was open. What I'll do is I'll just close that and we'll do a test. 
we'll see if we highlight it, if it will just paste it in there and not open it. There we go, it says it has. So the United States National Health Interview, the United States National Health Interview. So that's great. You can also just have it alongside, for example, in here. And it will just continue to do that. Another great feature of this is that if you come across images, you can click this here, boop, lasso the image that you want, and it will paste that in. What I love about this is that it's not creating a JPEG or an additional amount of data in your system. It's just taking, uh, it's doing an, emb an embedment of that. So it's taking a little window from the PDF and displaying it here. You can double click on that and it will take you to the place. Cool. So that's pretty much the settings that I use for on iPad. Okay, I hope that was helpful and not too long-winded. I think it was a little. Here is Obsidian on the iPad. I'm using my personal vault here. To set up sync, you can pay for it via Obsidian, or you can also do it via iCloud. The importance of being able to sync via iCloud is that it syncs all of your plugins and your settings. Though, for this circumstance, I'm using my own personal vault. I'll show you now how I use the iPad because this has the same settings as the other that I just showed you how I set that up. So you open up a PDF, you enable the highlighter, and this is the auto paste. I then create a new note, and here I'll just call this Harris. And then you can just begin highlighting. Long press with the Apple Pencil here, highlight, then you'll say linked, copied and paste, and you'll go there and it's in. Again, you can change the selections for what it is that you prefer. You can even close that note and continue working on. Ah, oh, if a note's not open, it'll ask you to open one. There we go. So that's the benefit of having the note that you're pasting just sitting there in the background. So I won't have to ask where to put it. And then you can keep on checking or add your own notes. There is the option, I believe, to be able to long press the tab, split right, and to keep working, the only thing is I find that the, the, the limitation of the width of the page on the, I have a 10 inch iPad, it's not quite wide enough for me. I'll give another example. Yep. Boom. So I like to just keep it nestled in behind. So that's the way that I use the iPad with Obsidian and PDF++ to make annotations in my own special way. I hope that this has been helpful, that you gain some new insights and some more kind of productivity lift